All right, guys. So now we got this bad boy on. It's the um, Garrett GTX 2860R Gen 2. Um, I got it on uh, semi. Where there's a couple more things to bolt up. It's bolted on. Um, we got to clock it. We have to adjust the downpipe to fit it. Uh, we did get the three-inch. Um, V-band clamp style outlet. Um, this is an extra add-on that you have to bolt onto this housing. This housing is an internally waste gated uh, housing. Um, it's a T, uh, T25 housing with the 5 bolt pattern that's able to fit this V-band here. Um, there's a couple more things we have to do. Touch things up, get this oil line connected, clean a couple things. Um, if you're wondering if there's oil here, it's PB Blaster. Get the old bolts off. Now, this turbo is a decent size upgrade compared to the KO4. Um, we're not going to run that much boost for now. Well, I'm off a couple inches here. All right, guys, we are back. Everything's pretty much put together. Um, I'm going to go over a couple things that had to be placed since the last part of the video um, and small things that had to be changed. So, first thing I want to point out is this we had to cut this bracket down, <clears throat> a part of the front support. So, we cut it here to make sure this coolant line didn't rub against here um, or create his heat issues. Then, we cut a, sl a small slice here. And we didn't have to touch anything on this side. Uh, as you can see, the turbo is a little dusty. I had to do some shaving down. We're going to clean that off, just blow it off with some air, compressed air. So, as far as the turbo goes, everything went in decently smooth. There's slight stuff uh, that this heat shield for the manifold might cut down the road, but for right now, I kind of want to keep that heat shielded from the uh, head of the engine. Uh, the intake is a 3 inch outlet or inlet, sorry, 3 inch inlet compared to the factory about 2 inch and some change and this runs down to the fender well so there's small adjustments had to be made to this it has a T-bolt band clamp on it because it was pushing off every other clamp that I put on so I put something a little tighter and a little snugger fit on there and there's a couple things that had to be modified to fit this uh, I will go ahead and zoom out or zoom in go ahead and show you guys so for here for this coolant line there's nothing that had to be modified for the rear coolant line which sits on the back of the turbo housing right here on the back I don't know if the video can pick that up um, but on the back here which even if I take the camera and show you guys it wouldn't really make too much of a difference because it's underneath here that line had to be cut because this comes up all about an inch and in, no about not about an inch about a half an inch upwards so the factory line just couldn't fit there so we had to do a little cutting which will be fixed um, once we get the line we just ordered some high quality and high temperature line that will be able to fit in there and then after that what we're going to do is we're going to do steel braided if that doesn't work for now uh, the next thing is the oil return line now the oil return line is still using the factory one do I suggest that? No. I think that uh, it has a small kink in it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the factory line and I ordered uh, this nice, nice high temperature and high quality line that's going to go from the oil return down into the, uh, the oil pan so it's smooth. And let me zoom out here. And go over a couple other things and then go ahead and move the tripod back. Get a better view of the overall car. So, because what, what we want to do is we want to talk about some cooling and heating issues here. So, right now the turbo sits <clears throat> very, very close to the bumper. So, the biggest thing is, is that this metal doesn't heat up enough to burn the bumper or melt the bumper because obviously obviously the, the housing right here is very very close to the bumper I mean it's really close if not almost touching 
so we worry about it getting hot here. Um, coolant is a huge, huge thing for this turbo because we don't want it to start caking on oil once the car shut off. Coolant is always important, so we're going to run a different type of coolant um, that's going to be a couple steps colder compared to what the factory is. Um, we even did this nice grill. This is by Dippin' Sauce, and this grill is fantastic. It lets so much airflow into the engine bay of the car and also helps for AC, a condenser, and radiator. It just It cools off a lot. Um, and so that's a big thing. So what we're going to do now with this is most likely drill some holes into the uh, hood of the car. Right here, probably around this section, and get some air onto the turbo itself to maybe get it just a tad bit cold, colder. Now we know how turbos work. If they run hot, you know, the ga exhaust gases move quicker so on and so forth. The idea is to just kind of keep this area cooled down. I don't necessarily need to cool down the turbo, but just keep it a little cooler because we don't want all that heat inside the engine as this is a lot bigger than factory, a lot more heat, probably way more heat than anything else in this car is normally used to or up to factory spec as far as handling that type of heat. Uh, so. I mean, it, the, the stock Fiat gets hot already because the engine bays are really cramped. So, this is really going to start making things hotter, which is why we have a hood vents and so on and so forth. Um, but overall, the install was pretty smooth. Uh, the exhaust housing um, of the turbo had to have a flange adapted onto it from ATP Turbo because this has an internal wastegate on it. It's a different version compared to there's like a couple different versions of the GTX 2860R Gen 2. Um, this one is the internal wastegate version and so I had to order a flange which is a T25 flange to a 3 inch uh, V-band for your downpipe or your factory catalytic converter. Um, however when I did that the the um, the piece, the flange, is about 2 inches or so longer than it would normally be so it didn't line up with a factory exhaust system or my exhaust system in that case so I had to have it um, pushed out or moved over a little bit and they cut it up and fixed it up and welded a new uh, pipe down there like part of the mid pipe um, from to fit the down pipe down and other than that there hasn't been too much crazy custom stuff like I said the oil um, the oil, I'm sorry, not the oil, the coolant line had to be cut. The oil lines, um, I used it to use the ATP line that they have that goes into the stock oil filtration unit down there, which we're getting rid of. We're going to delete that and put a sandwich kit in here, which is going to allow more space, and it's not going to be so complicated um, from the factory system. I mean, the filter is in such a funky place. And especially with this, I don't feel like taking the bumper off every time just to do an oil change because they're going to be quite frequent as this runs a lot hotter and harder than a factory turbo. Um, for tuning, we're on Euro Compulsion Phase 3. Still needs to be tuned for this turbo. We're not necessarily trying to push power right now. We're only in about 12, 15 PSI um, as this motor's not built yet. We have a built motor on the way, um, which then we can turn up the boost. And with MTD's camshaft, it's perfect. So, I mean, it's, it's just going to keep going from now and uh, keep moving forward and keep progressing through this whole thing. Um, that's pretty much where it's at now. Everything's pretty spot on. Boost hits around 3,000 to 3,500. There's um, a minimal boost lag, uh, especially if you're in fifth gear. It, you got to downshift unfortunately to get up there again because you just don't want to the computer freaks out if you pull down the gas pedal in fifth gear because you're lugging the turbo which you shouldn't do anyways um, so other than that the turbo is spot on everything seems good it, like I said it runs a little hot so we're gonna bend some stuff out here just for the safety of other parts like fans and things like that um, we're gonna switch out to an all aluminum radiator Next, uh, there's a couple, there's a lot of things on the next list right here. 
but so far everything runs good. It works great with a boost controller. Um, I have a Gretti Profect Spec 2 or Profect, Profect B Spec 2, something like that, and it works great. Can't complain about that. A couple people I wanted to name out for their help would be Chris. Uh, he runs a YouTube page as well, and he's on Instagram as a Barth Chris, but I believe the I is a six or something like that. I'll leave a link to his Instagram and his YouTube page as well. Um, next person is Dippin' Sauce, Lance, always helping out with a car, always ready to modify whatever I throw at him, and it's just fantastic. Um, MTD for their camshaft and their help and tuning support and then Euro Compulsion for their tuning. Um, they Both those companies talking back and forth have been great and uh, it just goes on from there. Right now we're on water to meth, uh, about 75% meth to 25% water. We're on full E85 and the spark plugs have been uh, pushed down to one step colder plugs which helps a lot. Um, the biggest thing now is making sure that our exhaust, uh, exhaust gas temperatures, the EGTs, aren't crazy high. So that's why we're running all these things in the meantime to kind of give it a little extra protection. Um, and it goes on from there, so that's pretty much it for now. I'm going to do another video with sound clips. This thing sounds completely different than a stock of Barth or even with my previous K04 Turbo. This thing sounds mean. It just wants to go and go and go. And, uh... It's it's something to definitely be heard. Um, or that's going to be the next video coming up would be the sound clips. We're going to do a little run tomorrow. Keep it on the light side. We're not going to push her too hard. But uh, that's basically all that's to it. Got to give her a little wash. Got some extra sandpaper that we grinded some of this stuff down. So some of the stuff's a little dusty. You know, wash it off. Clean it up. But yeah, I uh, always want to thank my subscribers for all your support like, share, comment, do whatever you gotta do. Always appreciate it. Um, more stuff coming. Sorry my video quality isn't the greatest, but I try to make it more informative rather than put on a show for quality here. Um, that's basically where we're at now. And uh, see you guys soon.